But first thing I want to say is a big shout out to Blair Goodman who had his retirement party last night at the Five Minute Exempt. We wish you good luck, Blair. You have you done a wonderful service for your community and for all of us. We're gonna miss you and we we do want to get on another show to your new successor. Amen. We, that we hope he carry on the same tradition that Blair Goodman did so wonderfully well. And so, out with, you know, goodbye, Blair. We miss you. Hello, Engano, uh, Abito. We, we want you and we appreciate you. And we're glad you're on board. Thank you. I've got a seat with a microphone if you ever need your voice heard. And I think he will do that. Love and, to have you. Love to have you. Okay, now I'm going to hit a few things that's going to happen locally. At 12 to. It's going to be from 12 to 2 at 93 Market Street. Our only best and wonderful poetry girl will be doing something at Adrian's Library today. So come if you like poetry and you love poetry girl like we do here. Go there from 12 to 2 at Adrian's Library, 93 Market Street, Poughkeepsie, New York. And now I'm going to get to the internet jewelry and I'm going to hit local again. The Kingston Public Policy Politics Book Club. Are you passionate about policy and politics? Try or took it only to do who you agree with. What's wrong with that? Try or took, like I said, this book club is designed to be a non policy, an all inclusive group. Inclusive group, liberal, conservative, libertarian, progressive, anarchist, and anywhere mentioned, all are welcome. We agree on book and meet monthly for informal civil non at hoping discussion on the issue. Look us up at meetup.com and join us there or send email to pub policy book club at gmail.com and we're getting the echo. Okay, so I'm gonna read that again. The Kings of Public Policy Politics and Book Club. And you want to come there and talk about any issue you want, and you could be any group you want to, you can look them up at meetup.com or join there and or send email to pubpolicybookclub at gmail.com. And so let's get down to tonight, today, from 9.45 to 11.45, the League of Women Voter Community informally are raising the age for criminal prosecution in New York. Information for this is www.lawmenhudson.org, Kingston Library, 55 Franklin Street, Kingston. So that time again is 9.45 to 11.45. And the legal women borrow community and do naturally on raising the aid for criminal prosecution in New York. And it, that either online at www.lawmenhudson.org or go to the Kingston Library, 55 Franklin Street, came to New York. And 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., the Repair Cafe. Bring your beloved but broken and together with culture, fix it for free items in Newport, Methodist Church, Main Street, Newport. And you can call at 646-302-5835. And at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and I went down there yesterday. The Friend on Library Holiday Book Sale. A wide selection of gift quality book and media. It will be available at sale. Information www.pogitsilibrary.org slash friend of PPO Book Sale. Lowest Grove, Samuel Moore, Historical Site, Route 9, Poughkeepsie. And You'll be able to see because you just go to Route 9, stay on the right, and the signs are there. And you can then, you know, because I went down there yesterday, I got me some art books, and I got a nice little calendar, and I really like the art exhibit, you know, book, so I said, I got to buy these. And I did, so go down there and check it. Is help, they're also going to help the library, the public library system get their money in, you know, to keep the library going. And you have a great time. At 10, also at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., holiday affair. Item for sale include handcrafted, handmade craft, baked goods, specialty, peat card, and gifts. 
They will also be attached to include toy jewelry, books, clothing, children's clothing, high school items, a children activity area. Information for 845-246-7802, Sorbity, United Methodist Church, 67 Washington Avenue, Sorbity. And so we're going to keep going on, and we're going to turn in again, and this is Hudson Highland Natural Museum, Natural Walk and Talk. See your opportunity to walk their trail with a museum educator, talk with folks about what we are seeing now. For adult and family up to eight, from five and up, information www.hanm.org or call 845-534-5506-X. And that's the rule I can see there. And another book sale. And it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Used book sale store. A wise love and good quality book and meal will be a better at the sale. Information for that is www.poklibrary.org slash friends of PD Poughkeepsie Book Sale, U Bookstore, Boardman Road Branch Library, Poughkeepsie, New York. And that's again for 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. a used book sale. And it's a used bookstore at Boardman Road Branch Library, Poughkeepsie. And at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., they're having their third annual Hudson Valley Hullabaloo. Artists design a craft beer for food material and others will be offering high quality designer giftable items. Information for that is www.hbahullabaloo.com at the Andy Murphy Midtown Neighborhood Center, 467 Broadway, Kingston. And also at 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., this is at Rhinebeck now, the group holiday show. A show of high-quality jewel craft. 22 artists, works include blown glass, knitted hat, basket, poetry, pottery, sorry, college, college jewelry, silk scarf, hand-weaving cards, candle, copper books, and clocks. Information for 845-876-4151 at the Beekman Arm, Dell Master Conference Center, 6387 Mill Street, Rhinebeck. So that, and once again, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., the group holiday sale show. And the information for that, 845-876-4151, Beekman Arm, Dell Matter Conference Center, 6387 Mill Street, Rhinebeck. And 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., Bells on Broadway, Holiday Market and Children's Festival. Live music, storytelling, craft for kids, and photo with Santa and Frosty. Gingerbread house competition, vendors and craft. Information to call is 845-784-1110 or Haley at safeharbor.org. Lobby at the Rick Theater, 107 Broadway, Newburgh. So that again... 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Bells on Broadway, Holiday Market, and Children's Festival. And the call for that, to go to Isabel Point in the event, and you're around the Newburgh area, or in Lemon Newburgh, is eight, the phone call is 845-784-1110, or Haley at safeharbor.org. And now, from, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., Brush Spirit with Barbara Bash. This workshop will explore the ancient Chinese principle of heaven, earth, and human in the making of a broad stroke using big brushes, buckets of ink, and some time smart. Information to call is 845-255-1559, Unison Art, 68 Mountain Road, Row, Newport. So that, again, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Brush spirit with Barbara Bash. And the information to call 845-255-1559, Unison Art, 68 Mountain Grass Road, Newport. And from 2 p.m. to 4.45 p.m., the Worcester Transitional General Meeting, Member Annual Meeting, Mason Hope Rock Community Center, Rock City Road, Worcester, information for that at Worcester, New York Transition, dot org, or call 845 Six seven nine oh seven seven nine, and another at four p.m. to six p.m. The open meet section off the wall Barrett holiday, fifty exhibit and sale. 
holiday small workshop, 18 by 18, or small work of art, exhibit through 12, no, December the 12th. Information for that is www.barrettopcenter.org, Barrett Art Center, 55 Knoxon Street, Poughkeepsie. That's our friends over at Knoxon Street. Yes, very close from the street, so we should come. If I could go there, I wish I could go there, but I got something just in the point, and I'll tell you about that in a minute after I get through the Saturday read. But that is once again 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Open reception off the war Barrett Holiday at the Barrett Art Center, 55 Knoxon Street, Poughkeepsie. At 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., the holiday affair. There will be baker, canned iron, children's clothes, toys, recycled treasure, book, crap, but brochures, jewelry, specialty are nuts, children activity, and food all while you shop at the Sovereign United Methodist Church, 67 Washington Avenue, Sovereign and the number for that, 845-246-7802. And uh, my old favorite friend, Saturday Night Live, Music and Noodle, second room set at 8.30, no cover, five donations to museum recommended. Information for that, 845-255-8811 or www.gknoodle.com. Gorman Kadah, the Desi and Noodle Shop at the Right A Plaza, Newport. And 7 p.m. is Movie with Spirit, Son of the Bride. It's a touching comedy draw about midlife crisis, Alzheimer's disease, and inter intergenerate family law, Reddit or Spanish with English subtitles. Information for this is 845-389-9201. Organized Harrison at midspring.com, Christ Episcopal Church, 20 Cal Street, Bacuzzi, New York, and the price of admission is $5. And 8 p.m. is the Bastard. They're having this orchestra at Bastard College in Donut, Nevada. Conduct the information for that at www.music.bassetteducation slash concert at HTML or call 845-437-7294 Bassett Card, Skinner Hall or Music Poughkeepsie. So that again at 8 p.m. Bassett Card Orchestra. And the call is 845-437-7294, Bassett College, Skinner Hall of Music, Poughkeepsie. And one other thing is 8 p.m. Dream Night. Come on, Beacon, let's dance. All welcome couple, single, and friend and stranger. Like refreshments, sir. Information for this, 845-765-0667 or 845-865. 831-4988 Holland Cultural Center, 477 Main Street, Beacon, and the price of admission is $10. And that is all for the morning read because I'm going to condense it because I had one other thing on the top. And I will get into that is today from 6 to 9 p.m. The Cincinnati Hudson Valley Center, Hudson Valley Got Talent. Fun, first annual fundraising and talent show featuring local arts competing for grand prizes and in music, dance, and poetry. The admission for that is $25 and for tickets visit bit.ly slash 8 the and got talent dinner provided by local chef DJ and dancing the fall is at Saturday, November the 21st today at the BSP Lounge at 323 Wall Street, Kingston, New York. Doors open at 5 p.m. Cash bar, family friendly. And the reason is very also, it for sure, is organized by Citizen Action, which is doing a lot trying to get in the hot Valley. And they're trying to, you know, and they really are trying to help the people and everyone in the hot Valley. And the very good talent show you would enjoy. And me and Sharon Forbes are going to be the host of the show, so you want to come out and see us and try to perform and do the best, and we'll do the best we can, and I'm trying to hold up because I do have a slight personal thing that happened, but like they said, you got to keep the show going, and so I'm going to condense it and turn it back to the man, to the boss man, Stanley Moss. And remember, you hit it first. 
right here on the voice of the city of Poughkeepsie, WHVW 950 AM. And I'm looking forward to that. You have my full support, and I'm going to try my best to be there. Well, at least I go to the one at Academy Adrian's Library. That's awesome. Cause I, I, me, and, me, and, me and the kids go there all the time. My 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 girl my, my little girl Stephanie loves loves the Adrian's library. She she goes there all the time. Her and all her friends from high school. Well, today is the day well, to show support to a very good friend of ours. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna try my best to get over there. Uh, that I will try to do. So, what time was that again? Twelve to two. Twelve to two. Well, it sounds like the place to be. I hope to see you there. Cause oh, I'll be there. Then I gotta run up to Kingston for my audi my host audition. Alrighty then, we are going to, we going to be to be there or be square. I can't think of a better place to be. Support your local library and support arts and entertainment, and I always support my partner. Yeah, Alrighty. I'm Alrighty. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm um, supporting this. I just went down to that uh, Lotus Grove yesterday, and I got this one by Monet and nice art book. Oh, what you got here, boy? It's an art book. Monet. Monet himself. Oh wow, man! Don't let my daughter I got about a few books. They don't even Don't right let up. my daughter see this. All right, she likes him. Oh, she just she uh did some reproductions of some of his artwork when she was young in art class. Back there, there's some she done that's uh, hanging on the wall. Oh man. I got me a sauce. Yeah, I, I well you know you know that. Uh, I'm surrounded by artists in the family, so mm. I, I feel like I feel like nobody when it comes to art and stuff because uh, I'm surrounded by artists, and <laughs> that's why I have so much art in the house and stuff. That and literature, I have so many signed books, you know, and stuff like that. So it's it's like they always giving stuff to me, and I'm like, you know, what am I gonna do with it? And I, other than get it appraised, that's all I do. Yeah, but they say here, you know, like it's like Christmas time, you know, all the time. Every time they come by here, they can, you know, I painted this for you, and you know, I've got all this artwork, and it's like, well, I don't know what to do with it. Mm. You know, I don't have a place to put it except hang it up on the wall, and it's so beautiful. So I do, and I know it's done out of love, but um, yeah. it's like I've got a private collection, and I don't know what to do with it. That's like me now because I got my stuff into art, and last like the last few days because of what you know it's personal problem i've been doing a lot more sketching and it's even to help out because it gives me something to do besides walking around and we have our lights back Alrighty then we're getting a phone call yep <laughs> my wife Laura called me on the phone. <laughs> Call me on the cell phone, dear. <laughs> That's alright. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I love you, dear. I know. I got the cell phone on me if you need to call me. But um, so. you listen to WHVW 950 AM if you would like to call in. Just as eight, the number is 845 471 8180. Um, but, uh, we was talking about the, uh, Adrian's Library, I believe, and, uh, I was fixing to continue with the morning read here, the, uh, places to go for our local tourists and, uh, those people who want to get out of the house, and, uh, 
and things to go, people to see, places, to, things to do. For uh, everybody who wants to uh, get out and do a little something, something. But um, you can always get out to uh, the old Rhinebeck Aerodome at 9 Norton Road, Red Hook, New York. If you want to see what's going on out there, you can give them a call at uh, 845 752 3200. Or uh, you can uh, hook up with the Statsburg State Historical Society at 75 Mills Manson Road, 6 Road, um, the Statsburg, New York. That's 845 889 8851. Uh, Dutchess County Fairgrounds has always got something going on. Uh, and that's 6. 6550 Springbrook Avenue at Rhinebeck, New York, and uh, that's at number is 845. Uh, excuse me. Now the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Library, Presidential Library and Museum is 4079 Albany Post Road, High Park, 845-486-7770. And right, our friends right down the street is Mid Hudson Civic Center, 14 Civic Center Plaza, at Poughkeepsie, New York, is 845-454-5800. And we also down the street, you know the direction, we got the Chance Theater at 6 Crown Street in Poughkeepsie, New York, it's 845-471-1966. And of course, um, Vanderbilt Mansion Historical Society is at 119 Vanderbilt Park, Hyde Park, New York, it's 845-229-7770. And the Bardavon, 1869 Opera House, 35 Market Street, Poughkeepsie, New York. Is eight four five four seven three twenty seventy two. We was just discussing that earlier about the Nutcracker, which will be performing down there very soon through the month of December. And uh, Stormville Airport Antique Show and Flea Market is at four twenty eight New York, New York two sixteen Stormville New York. And their number is eight four five two two one sixty five sixty one. And uh, the Mid Hudson Children Museum is down by the water at 75 North Water Street, Poughkeepsie, New York, 845 471 0589. And uh, Wilderstein Historical Site is at 330 Morton Road, Rhinebeck, New York, 845 876 4818. And also, if you want to go a little nuts, there's also the Banana Comedy Club at 2170 South Road, Poughkeepsie, New York. You see what's on their venue, just give them a call at 845 Four six two thirty three thirty three, and of course right down the street, going heading down the hill, you have the Coonan Hackett Art Center at nine Vassar Street, Poughkeepsie, New York eight four five four eight six forty five seventy one, and my favorite place to be. I just wish they had a nice. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say this because uh, I just think is what should happen. People should think more out of the box than anything else. Speak, my friend. You know what would look nice down by the river, and I think would would totally change the economy of this town. Right. I think they should put. Uh, people gonna hate me for this because they hate normally you? don't Why? think. If uh, if they kept if they kept the property down by the river, and and uh, basically sold this town as a whole town instead of just one block at a time or concentrating on one area and just and just advertise this whole town and and put like amusement down there could you imagine what this place would be like if there was a six flags down there could you imagine what this place would look like if there was a a, 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 a seriously an amusement park down yes there? could you imagine what kind of business infrastructure would be here yeah. The, the kids coming out of high school would go to work. The economy would change. Big business would come here. Grocery stores would open up. None of the businesses would close. Yeah. The money that would come into this town, you got the land scraped off and cleared off. It would boom the economy. You know how nice it would look if you walked across that bridge and you seen roller coasters, Ferris wheels, and the economy. The, the people would come here instead of going all the way to New Jersey to go to Six Flags. Yeah. Or going all the way out of state to go to Six Flags. They would be coming here. Nobody would leave. The jobs would be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? They yeah. should be selling this place. They should be selling this. And actually, it wouldn't be selling the property at all. They would still have the property. They'd be leasing it, leasing it to a park. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. It'd be the only one in Hudson Valley area. The only one. 
Now we're going to say something that's going to make the bus you bubble a bit. First of all, you sit at the waterfront, right? Yeah, just north of the bridge. Okay, I explain. What the, right, they do all those benefits, but number one, you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to get, you know, a permit. Two, you're not number two. Let me explain. Number two, the insurance card. Because you know what going to because you're going to have people down there going to the river anyway, but you're also going to have people who are up to no good. You're going to have people who want a job, but you're going to have people who don't. And when you look at the vandalizer, insurance agency is going to say, wait a minute. You know, you know, you're at the river, you got the you know, low income group here, and they're going to raise the insurance rate to sky high. And that would happen when they had one a business to come here once, I heard. And they the business back up because they said the way the, you know, the way the uh, economy in, in McKitsey, you know, it is not worth it, you know, to have that unless you get the kind of people who want to come down there will spend the money to keep, you know, going. Right. Now, with that, with that being said and that being taken into mind, okay, when, when, you look, when you look at the alternative, okay, when an amusement park comes to your town, they provide their own security. The same way to protect their own interest. See what I'm saying? Okay. And when you when you have an influx in an economy through tourism, also what you would have, just like these low profile ships that we see parked up here every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking tourism. Now you're talking millions of dollars of tourism that comes along with that. And when you have that influx in your economy. You can afford to do certain things when you have an influx of economy and not closing businesses. See that you're thinking outside of the box. You're not closing yourself down to saying, well, we're going to sell this property to one business one time and they're going to own it. Once they own it, they can do whatever they want to with yeah. it. And they tell you. But when you lease something out, you still own the property. See what I'm saying? Because it's under lease. It's not sold off. You still own that, that property. So you didn't sell it. You were leasing it out, just like a landlord. And you can tell that amusement park, we want to focus on the history. We want to enhance the history, but we want the beauty. We still have the fireworks displays. We want to make this beautiful. Okay? But we also want to concentrate on the tourism. We need the business growth, okay? We don't want to walk across the bridge and see jailhouses. We don't want to walk across the street and, and see condos where people don't live here. They live they live here, but they, they work somewhere else because that, that don't bring jobs. No. They got jobs somewhere else. And we have not only that, we have to give them tax breaks and credits. Yeah. So they're not paying taxes, so we don't benefit them. No, they don't benefit nobody but right. them. See, so basically... You're saving your $100 million from your jailhouse problem, yeah. okay? And you can take a million dollars and you can build that. You can build the Y, and then you take the other $99, $99 million and you work on your Main Street issue, and then you let them build down there. And they will build it because you gave them land. Yeah, but the thing I'm looking at is... It's the old-fashioned old yeah. old statement. You build it, they will come. Yeah, but the thing I'm worried about that you is really concerned is also will help me put money back in the school system. Oh, yeah. That's what the main thing we need. Yeah, but the thing is, all of the businesses that will flock around that is the same way. Check this out. Six Flags built a amusement park in the desert in California, and it became a town. 20 miles out in the desert, they built a Six Flags called Magic Mountain. Six Flags Magic Mountain, it built in the desert, and it became a town. Now, if you build one here, see what I'm saying? And you already have the biggest draw in the Hudson Valley, and that's that bridge. Somebody put a sidewalk on a burned down bridge that burnt down a long time ago. Mm-hmm and put a sidewalk on it, all of a sudden it became the biggest biggest draw here in Hudson Valley. See what I'm saying? 
now i'm talking about saving that money that they're thinking about building over and build a jail we're going to do this we're going to do that you take that money and you've you fix your main street you fix it right so what i'm saying and then you take the rest of the money you have it to invest in your parts and your businesses these businesses that don't want to close down that's been here for a hundred years or their family businesses they won't close they're going to fit right in and stay there nothing's going to close everything the only thing they're going to have to do is pick up the beat and maybe read have to have to re refurbish the front of their stores to keep up with the times mm-hmm. but they're not going to close down see what i'm saying so you, yeah you're going to have to fit in but you're not going to have to close your store see what i'm saying because the business is coming because like these little ships we could see coming in here, these little crude, low profile cruise ships, mm-hmm. they're going to be stopping here to go to that amusement parks. People are going to stop here and want to spend time here. The money's going to be flowing. See what I'm saying? The economy's going to boom. It's not going to fall. And now right now they, they're, they're nervous about building condos. All I'm saying is think a little bit further down the road mm-hmm. because you don't want to end up with another rip on your hands. They don't know what to do with the rip right now. See what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't want to build another condo 10 years from now. It's going to look like the rip. And then you're going to have two buildings down there on the river that you really don't have control of what the landlord is going to do with it. And you're going to say, what are we going to do? Yeah, but here what I'm going to say, because we're going to get too much deep into yeah. that. And we need, but I'm going to say one other thing. If you want this to be done, you're not going to do it in this election cycle. You may have to bring it up after the election. After everyone get in office in the city calendar legislature in January, right now people ain't gonna be thinking about that. They're gonna be thinking about Christmas, Thanksgiving, oh, yeah. and Christmas oh, yeah. shopping. So let's table this to after yeah. the holidays. Oh yeah, of course. I'm just saying, you know, it's an idea. I'm just saying, it's it's just an idea. That things come from ideas. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, think out of the box. Why are you on holiday? Why are you on the holiday break? We don't run a political show. I just have these ideas. This is what well, my mind works. I like the idea, but let's let's keep that in mind. Write that down so we don't, we don't forget it. Then we can bring yeah. it up to some council member because you said there are some council members coming in that m- may be very receptive to this idea. Yeah, it's just, you know, just remember one thing. It's two minutes after the hour of seven. And you heard it here first on WHV W950 AM with my partner here. Man, wow. yeah, Zeppo Roberts, <laughs> also known as Mad Dog. Mad Dog, yeah. Okay, Roberts. now I want to bring up something interesting I just seen. I got this from Newport, but I went to these two events over there. Let's hear right. it, The Prospect of the Prison Experience, that was Tuesday. Thursday, it was another presentation, the School of Prison Pipeline. But the one coming up Sunday, the last of this event, well, they got a lot more, a few other this Saturday. Like a book discussion today at 4 p.m. with Laura Marcus and Molly Shaney at SUNY New York, Jacobson Factory Tower, Room 1010. And also Saturday at 7 p.m. presentation and question and answer with actress Barbara Rosenbaum, Miss Rosa, and the OITMB Netflix series. SUNY Newport Studded Theater, but the Sunday one is interesting, is at 1 p.m. is at the Elton Memorial Library, 93 Main Street, Newport, and there's a rapper with Chris Watkins, and there is a civil rights lawyer, so I definitely got to check this out. It's the last of the series of the very interesting art places, and I got to go see this. So that's going to bring it back to the man, you know, the boss man. It sounds like a good series. And I got to see what this civil rights lawyer got to say. That, that sounds like an interesting conversation. Right now, I really want to really want to touch down on something just as a reminder. Uh, just uh, just after the holidays, uh, I would like to be starting our, our uh, starting our sponsorship uh, drive here in the city of Poughkeepsie. We'll be starting a uh, starting a sponsorship drive for the radio station uh, here on Main Street in the city of Poughkeepsie. We'll be starting down by, uh, uh, I wanted to start down by the river and work ourselves back up this way, uh, visiting the businesses and 
letting everybody know that uh, uh, broadcasting is not free, supporting the radio station and the uh, community service that we provide. Right. Uh, uh, for uh, support for the show, we try to uh, get the word out for everything, raising funds, supporting the schools, supporting the city and fundraisers. Uh, through documentaries, through advertisement, if people want to get involved with uh, advertising their business, this would be the place to do it. We do have radio times, we do commercials, we do uh, spots and everything else. So if uh, people are interested in advertising their business, uh, WHVW 950 AM is the place to do it. And uh, we can uh, give you the information on how to do that and how to run spots and commercials on the air on a regular basis. So uh, we'll be getting those that information out to you. And uh, if you're interested in uh, doing spots or uh, commercials and information breaks, um, all you have to do is just contact us, and uh, we will let you know. And uh, but we're going to be, be doing a walk walk through drive, uh, starting at the bottom of the hill and heading up this way. So if you see us, and even if you just want to get a T-shirt or anything, any information, we'll be getting it out to you. So you're going to be seeing me, and you'll probably be seeing Mad Dog. Yes, you will. We just want to make sure that everybody has the information that they need to get involved if they want to be involved. So um, just after the holidays, we'll be starting that uh, sponsorship drive for the radio station. And I wanted to remind everybody that the hats and t-shirts are still on sale. Uh, the hats are $5, the t-shirts are $20, and they are embroidered with hats and heart and soul of American music on. And... Uh, if you uh, if you go to the YouTube channel on um, Heart and Soul, oh let's say if you go to the YouTube channel, I'm sorry, got ahead of myself. On the happenings around the Hudson Valley, uh, you'll see the, the documentary of the family partnership. I uh, did a two-part interview with uh, Miss Verne Johnson, and she's the department manager of the Living Room, uh, also known as Mel's Place, and I had a pleasure meeting her and doing that. I did a, a two-part interview uh, there with her this past week and posted it. I think it turned out very nice. I want to thank her for participating in that. And there will be other videos and interviews with the directors of all the programs. And that will be going on for a while. And I'd like to give a shout-out to Mr. Brian Doyle for allowing me to do the documentary. It's all dedicated to Mr. John Flowers. It was an idea that uh, me and him discussed uh, uh, it's been well over a year ago, and uh, he asked me what I'd like to do, and I told him, and he agreed to it, and I approached Mr. Doyle about it, and he is allowing it to happen, and I really thank them both, and uh, God bless Mr. Flowers and uh, his family for uh, for their support and, and uh, allowing me to do that, to show my appreciation to my best friend. And uh, with that being said... I'm doing the best, most respectful job I can with the dedication to Mr. Flowers. But uh, moving on from there, once again, you're listening to WHVW 950 AM. If you'd like to call us, the number is 845-471-8180. And uh, mm -hmm. and right now it's 10 minutes after 7. Yeah, and let me get to a few other things that's just going to be... I'm going to do this slow because we both to have guests I heard, heard coming in. Yes. And so Sunday, the 11th to 22nd, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., the 18th annual Rosendale International Pickle Festival. And it's pickle, food, friends, funds, game, content, crap, music, and great entertainment. And to call for information, 845-204-8827 or go online at www.rosendalechamber.org slash Pickle Festival, Rosendale Recreation Center, 1055 Route 32, South Rosendale. So that, again, the 18th Annual Rosendale International Pickle Festival. Mm -hmm. And information for that is 845-204-8827 or www.rosendalechamber.org. Dot or slash pickle festival Rosendale Recreation Center 1055 Group 32 South Rosendale and at 10 a.m. also at 5 p.m. in Poughkeepsie is they having the same thing is print a library holiday book sale a wide slot of get quality book and media will be available at the sale information www.plab.com 
dot or slash friend of Poughkeepsie Book Sale, Lord Girls, Samuel Moore, Historical Site, Route 9, Poughkeepsie. And this is where I got my art books from. And I've been to these uh, bookstores and been to a book sale from the Adrian Library in the Poughkeepsie Library System. And so it started yesterday, and I said, you get down there because the books are going fast. So if you want to get a book, 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 get it as soon as you can and check them out, and you'll be doing it for a worthy course. And so I'm going to get one more. It's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Holiday Affair is from November the 20th and the 21st, which is today. They will be baked good can I, children club, toy, recycled treasure, book crap, the key. Duty, jewelry, and especially nuts, children. This is the same thing I read before, but this is on Sunday. And it's the Southern in the United Methodist Church, 67 Washington Street Avenue, Southern New York. And the call 845-246-7802. And from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Road and in Rhinebeck. The benefit to run it, Silica Cat, last, I mean, Silica Class celebration information is. Hannah527 at gmail.com, Rhinebeck, Town Hall, 8 in East, Market Street, Rhinebeck. So this is an annual art crap fair. Benefit of the Rhinebeck Center Class celebration. And from 10 a.m., I already read that before. So I'm going to take it back to the boss man. Uh, all right. I just wanted to uh, do a shout out real quick on the, on the CA. The Bright Nights Winter Coat Drive for the homeless families in Dutchess County. The collection box in the Temple Lobby winter coats for men, women, and children, hats, gloves, uh, scarves, boots, blankets, warm sweaters, and uh, sweatpants, blankets, socks, and toiletries. Collecting through uh, December 3rd, uh, 13th. Help sort donations on Sundays, November 29th through December 6th, uh, possibly December 13th. Volunteers are needed from the 19th and 20th for final organization and delivery to homeless shelters. Contact Liz Goldstone at lizgoldstone at hotmail.com. Monetary donations requested to purchase additional supplies. All donations are tax deductible. Receipts available to in TBE office. I uh, just wanted to give a shout out real quick. Um, and... Uh, it's, it's, it's expected to be a really hard winter. It has not got here yet. They, uh, know, I know they forecasted uh, 48 inches of snow in Chicago. Mm. And uh, that usually means we're not far behind. I know we have it, it hasn't hit the state of New York yet. They had a little, little dusting in uh, the Catskills, so uh, it's pretty much anything goes. Uh, we're supposed to be in the uh, 50s for the next seven days from the seven day forecast mm -hmm. and uh, just above freezing at night. But uh, we're right on that borderline where we can just fall off and go into go into the uh, freezing and the black ice. And mm -hmm. I just want to remind people to, uh, it's about that time of year to stock up on uh, uh, salt. It's about that time to get ready to get winter tires on your cars, insulate, insulate your windows and stuff like that. Prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, make make sure you have coats. There's a lot of people out here doing doing wonderful work collecting coats for people who are going to need them. Um, you can't be too prepared. Power lines snap. Make sure you have your generators ready. Um, I can't I can't stress it enough. Um, just be prepared. Dress you, when you dress. Dress in layers. It helps you from getting getting sick. Make sure you have your hats and your gloves ready, cleaned up. Take them out. Take them out of your 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 old chest. It's time to put the shorts away. Get your boots out the closet. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know these things. These things are all forms of uh, just readiness. Um, the wool socks, the whole nine yards. Make sure your kids are dressed warm when they go to school. You know we. Check on your neighbors when the bad weather hits. I just have that feeling in my bones. It's not going to be long from now. We might we might end up having a white Christmas. Mm. You know, it, it, it's about that time of year. I still run my little volunteer organization around my around my uh, apartment complex, and I check on my neighbors on a regular basis. Um, it's 
just what I do and uh, what I feel the need to do. And uh, I try to I try to help people help themselves. So uh, and I will always do that. But um, if you have a friend in need, try to try to be there for them. Check on them. Call them. Sometimes people just want a friendly friendly voice to hear. Sometimes they need something. Some you you just never know. So uh, if you can do that, do that. If you can volunteer your services for such as uh, the coat drive, please do. If you can get involved in something, please head out. Uh, be involved. Um, myself, I was actually looking forward to being involved and uh, removing snow from fire hydrants this, this uh, winter, but uh, we never got never got a call back on that. So mm. um, I thought the apartments in the park was going to be busy. But, yeah, I was uh, going to say, but, maybe uh, I put some people would be. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to wait and see. There's those like like you said a while ago. Those officials still uh, ain't made nothing official yet. So we got to wait till after after uh, everybody takes their perspective perspective seat and see what happens. I was gonna say I didn't hate to bust your bubble on that, but after I saw a few windows and digging up my car and trying to find my car in the white stuff, <laughs> I don't feel I'm gonna be in a very happy. Back wide motion of digging up fire hydrants. I am sorry. Oh no 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 no. See now this this is this is this organize organizing a volunteer organization and doing it physically. See mm -hmm. now I'm going in for I have the, a back procedure being done on December first. Oh I'm not, no, I'm not I'm not operating no snow shovel. But now organizing is a different thing. Oh do that. Yes. See organizing thing is a different thing. We're not going to do apartments in the park thing. Like we did this past year. I was going to say because I will be this joining night. you in the no, the surgery department. Park, yeah, partners in the park is not going to function like the winter fire hydrant removal program. It's not going to happen like and that. They can't. No, this is going to this the, if this goes on with the city, this is going to go on with students, and this or this is going to go on with uh, individuals that volunteer, sign up, and they're going to show up. Mm hmm. Last last summer we got it ended up me and Mr. Roberts was doing most most of the work we did we did uh we did have some volunteers that helped us in the park and we ended up giving them bicycles through the blessing of Mr. Johnny Galbraith at the church they they did uh, some work for us and they all also signed up with other programs so they did some work but uh, when it comes to removing snow. That stuff gets heavy, it gets wet, it gets frozen, and we're we're not as young as young and as as as, as these young bucks running around nowadays. So and that's what we like to see. We'd like to see some volunteers that uh, ready to get initiatives and uh, incentives to do things and get involved in things. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of kids out there that just don't do nothing but play in the snow. And get involved with something like removing the snow from fire hydrants. I think this, if the city was to work with us, and the school system would work with us, they could they could do something in their own neighborhood that could actually be worthwhile doing. And you know, helping out the fire department would save them a lot of money on their budget. That helps out the city. The incentives would actually help out all the way around. So, uh, with that being said, with that, that, with that being said, we know how to organize volunteer programs. So all they have to do is just give us a call and say, you know, we're, we'd like to do this, and we would help them. It uh, doesn't take much to get involved. Okay. Now I got two more reads. Like I said, we oh, have right. guests coming, and from is the this, front door unlocked? Is the front door unlocked? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna check once again, but I did that. Okay, at 10:30 to 12:30 Sunday. They had the Sunday morning vocal village. Personal and collective well being food voice, music and a vision for a better world. Every other Sunday through the no, December the twentieth. Information for that is nine one four eight three eight eight O six three two or go online at www.andymetrin.com slash event using art new park. So that again, Sunday morning vocal village. Personal collection of wilderness through voice, 
Music and vision for a better world. And the number to call is 914-388-0632. Or go online at www.angiemetton.com slash event USR New Parks. And from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., the break in between is Greek Bazaar from November the 21st, uh, 20th to the 22nd. Greek everything, food, pastry, and bake sale, boutique, neocrat, and white elephant, sponsored by the Hesalic Women's Club. Reno Shrine is at the St. George Greek Orthodox Church, 294 Greenkill Avenue, Kingston. And so I'm going to turn it back on the main door. I'm going to recheck those doors just to make sure because I know they're open. But you come on. And All on. righty then. Well, there it takes front door home. Make sure we ain't got everybody locked out. We get we come sneaking in the back door this morning, so I'm gonna double check the front door and make sure our guests ain't locked out. So, uh, at any rate, you're looking at uh, 21 minutes after seven, and uh, this is WHBW 9:50 a.m. If you want to give us calls, 845-471-8180, and uh, sitting here having a cup of coffee. And uh, relaxing a little bit. It's been a long morning, early morning. I was up late last night, and just trying to get a grip on things. I'm so glad my young daughter Stephanie is doing fine, and it's going to take her a while to heal. The uh, week's been long. Her surgery's been long, and uh, she's doing fine. She's back in school. She's just limited on what she can do, and uh, it, it 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 just it, it's just Hard, hard to deal with. I'd like to see her running around and playing with her friends and stuff. And she's, she's just, it, it breaks my heart to see that she's not doing the things that I, I'm used to seeing her do. But uh, it's just sad to, it's sad to know that she can't get out and run around and play, play or ride a bike and stuff like that before the snow, the snow flies. And I know it's going to because then she's going to be stuck inside, and that's, that's going to drive me nuts. We'll both have cabin fever. <laughs> but I'm going to bring her down here one day and I'm going to wake her up early in the morning and drag her down here where she can say howdy to everybody. So, uh, with that being said, um, I do want to I do want to invite everybody to uh, join me. I'm still looking for volunteers to uh, to sign up if they would like to volunteer uh, with the, helping me with the documentary. Um, I've got... Uh, Badges, looking for people with the uh, stage hands to help me with the uh, recording of the interviews and uh, getting the uh, documentary rolling. I'm obviously going to need some help. When uh, you view when you view those on uh, YouTube, you'll see that I had to set up the recordings and everything myself. And uh, I'd like to get get those things rolling and in place. So I need somebody to uh, do the cameras and. Uh, also help me set up the stage. So, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. But uh, I need, uh, I'm going to need some uh, s a stage assistance. I'm also going to need somebody to sit down and write questions, cards, and stuff like that. And uh, probably some editing help. Also, I have an empty seat here at the uh, studio. If somebody would like to join us on the show, this, this show is a strictly volunteer basis. So if somebody would like to learn the uh, broadcasting business a little bit, uh, you're more than welcome to come down and uh, join us. Uh, it's uh, actually fun. It's not a job when you love what you do, the people you meet, the places you go, and uh, this this is this is uh, probably the best job I've ever had. And that's thanks to uh, my best friend, Mr. Flowers. Lord knows I miss him. He's a great, great man. Inspiration. Inspiration. But uh, with that being said, I keep on I keep on falling back on that because uh, it's just it's just out of admiration and love. But um, right. Oh, excuse me. Dropping stuff on the floor now. That's not good. <laughs>
replace myself for that. I apologize. And there are still places we can always get out get out to, which is uh, a few places I've been checking out. Actually, there's uh, the tours you can uh, take, which is open in Beacon. Beacon we don't talk about too much, but uh, I've been trying to get out to uh, the Beacon Studios. They have. Uh, they have the Beacon Studios, which is uh, which is a citywide art event, includes nationally and internationally exhibited names, as well as those who are being shown in their, you know, and um, I've been trying to get some more literature on some of the things that's going on, going on around Beacon. Beacon was the first city that I painted houses for back in the 70s when I first came up here. The first experience that I had. Uh, in the Hudson Valley, I was, I was living in Newburgh. The first house that I ever painted, I was a painter for 33 years, the first house I ever painted was in Beacon. And I was 14 years old. And uh, 14? And I loved the city of Beacon. But I lived just on the other side of the river in Newburgh. And uh, the first, first experience I had on this side of the river was in Beacon. And then uh, my aunt, brought me to Poughkeepsie on a shopping trip and I could not I could not believe the difference and Newburgh was considered the sister city of, of Poughkeepsie but when she when she brought me to Poughkeepsie people treated it, it was like night and day I was going to school I was going to school in Newburgh but when she brought me over here I fell in love with this town nice and I fell in love with the Main Street area right there Academy Street all the way to Market Street that little area right there and oddly enough I ended up coming back because of the memories that I had there and uh, it became such a big big part of my life but Beacon I for some reason I want to I want to start getting more information out of Beacon because uh, the first, the first, like I said, the first house I ever painted was located in Beacon. My uncle had a construction company, and he put aluminum siding on a house, and uh, he let me paint the doors and the windows. The trim of the windows and the doors had to be painted, and he did all the aluminum siding. So I credit him for getting me the job and starting my career in painting. And uh, one day I'm going to find that house. We're gonna find the house. One day I'm gonna find that house, and uh, I'm gonna take a picture of it. <laughs> well, then we're gonna have to do a sightseeing tour, won't we? Yeah, and I could probably find it one day. I'm gonna take a picture of it. I'm gonna post it. But it was it, it was a beautiful, beautiful house. Aluminum siding back when aluminum siding was right. It was it wasn't the the felt plastic siding they have today, but. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna find that house. I'm gonna, it's, it's just memories. <clears throat> Do you know where exactly it was located? I think I believe it was on uh, First Street. First Street? Yeah, I think it was on First Street. So I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to find that out. If it's still around. Yeah. It might be a shopping mall by now. Yeah, because that, that was back in 70, 75. And uh, I can, I can, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get in touch with Marlene. She's still a Facebook friend. My cousin Charles is, and he still lives down in, down in uh, Savannah, Georgia. And uh, which is, strangely enough, a, a friend of ours, a friend of ours from here is actually moving down to Savannah, Georgia. Oddly enough, and uh, which is a beautiful city, and um, you know, and uh, I don't get. I don't get a chance to talk to Doug Novelletti that much, but him and his him and his family are moving down to Savannah, Georgia, and that's my home turf. <laughs> and uh, 
I know they're going to enjoy it. It is it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm going to have to take a vacation. I've got so much history there and so much family there. But um, it's, yeah. I wanted to take my wife down there for, for a honeymoon. And we, have, we never took a honeymoon when we got married. And she's never been there. My children never been there. They never met my family. So uh, I'm going to have to go down there sometime and have a big reunion. They never met my cousins and stuff. Of course, my, my immediate family is no longer around. Mm. But they never met any, never met any mosses. So I would like to introduce them, you know, sort of. The rest of them are out in California and Palm Springs and and in Arizona, which is where, where my daughter was born. But uh, I brought her back here when she was like one, one year old. So she's been raised here. And my other son, Justin, is from here. So it's, life is a strange journey. It is, man. Because it, it put a memory in my head and it just brought me back here and ended up raising my whole family here. Mm-hmm. But the best things, best things come from places that treat you right. The people here just treated me right. Found my first wife here, got my family, grandkids, and everything here. Okay, let me hit one more spot. And then as we wait for our people, at 2 p.m. Sunday, the performance of Silent Body by Jalenka Penny, solo show artist with Timmy Hill vocalist, is at the Woodstock Artist Associate Museum at 28 Tinker Street, Woodstock, and it's free. And the phone number to call for it, 845-679-2940. So at 2 p.m. to perform a silent body by Janaka Pina and solo show artist with Timmy Hill vocalist at the Woodstock Artist Association Museum at 28 Tinker Street, Woodstock, and it's free. And the call for it again at 845-679-2940. And I'm going to hit one more spot and see the Apollo 5, the Cleta Bokey Orchestra, the power of love, firewood from Hannah and Benjamin, Jennifer, Jennifer Sorin, conductor Andrea Forrest, soprano. Information for that is www.music.bassa.education slash concert dot at HTMA or call 845-437-7294, Bassa Court, Skinnick Hall of Music, Poughkeepsie, and that's at Sunday at 3 p.m. So all you opera lovers, come out and check that out. And let's see, the, let me see the ain't And they don't seem to be much else on there on the month for Sunday, except for one other thing. I'm going to say 8 p.m. live music information, 845-679-3484, Hombi Cafe at Rock and Roll, 50 Mill Hill Road, Woodstock, that's a tongue twister. And so it's again 8 p.m. Line the information to call is 845-679-3484. Is at Harmony Cafe at Rock and Roll, 50 Mill Hill Road, Woodstock. And my tongue is less like, uh uh-huh. Okay, back to you again. <laughs> oh, <that's cool. laughs> I was laughing at you, baby. I'm laughing with you. Do please do, because... Rock and roll? I don't know, walk. That was a W-O-K and roll. Say, so what's a walk? Something you can throw in a wabbit. Come here. <laughs> At 50 Mill Hill Road. I mean, talk about walk. That's a way to rhyme. <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. We need to laugh. Yeah, right. That's that's what happens when you get up as early as we do. I got up at 3.30 this morning just to make sure I could be here with our lovely fans this morning because I like to be here I like I like to I just love to be here with coffee having coffee with my friends and my friends are out there and I'm right here just 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 to be heard just to have the conversation you know because there's not there's not a person out there I don't love I'm telling you straight from the heart that's just the place to be I feel like I'm sitting down at one big coffee table 
you know. We need the coffee. You know, and if they got something to say, they can be heard. If they got something they want to talk about, we can talk about it. One thing we do need to do, we need to we need to get a, a big coffee pot to go on the coffee table, or we can brew some fresh coffee up in here. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Because you can. sometimes, sometimes, because we have we have issues just like everybody else. It's hard to get it's hard to get going this early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and but speaking uh, of coffee time, I, I just see one more for Sunday, 6 p.m. Tasty Tune Open Mic. Meet every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Sign up for a musician begin at 6 p.m. Show start at 6 30. Eat musician get to put, get to two song or ten minute wherever come earth a friendly family friendly music taste bud cafe forty West Market Street Red Hook taste bud cafe uh huh uh here we go again and that's just above the line mill with rock and roll there you go so back to what we're doing again because I drink all the coffee what do we got here. on the calendar for today. Like I said, we got the, today we got the uh -huh. poetry at 93 Main Street, Poughkeepsie. Right. From 12 to 2. I got to go up to uh, Kingston because I'm the host. I'm the, you know, for the Citizen After Fundraiser. Right. And that seems to be it for now. And, you know, you get, there are a few other things, but there's nowhere to go to a hundred different places. Uh, see, the, my, my thing is, if I go home, I'm going to end up falling asleep. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. No, because it's just... i got to keep just, going. i got to keep going. But I'm going to keep checking, but like I said, there's <laughs> nothing really close by. And I know you don't want to go down to no, you know, to the Glows Grove. I can't go back there. I already bought my, you know, I went down there and bought my some, some art books and, you know, and they was bringing in art books as fast, bringing in books as fast as you was buying. I mean, it was like a line almost not to the end of this place. What, and I, what I would like to do, I'd like to set up an event. I'd like to set up an event for uh, uh, for JP and uh, simul simulcast an event. Mm -hmm. I really, I really would. I'd like to be able to simul simulcast an event and uh, from a location that we could hook up to. I wish we could too. Yeah, you know, that we could that we could hook up the cable to and broadcast and simulcast from there to the radio station. And uh, although we have the capability of doing that, you know, I think we could uh, really do some good as far as fundraising for for uh, a worthy cause and really get the word out. And uh, seeing as how um, we're trying to make the this particular station, the voice of the city of Poughkeepsie, and grow along with it, and uh, and do these things. I would like to see that take place because mm -hmm. people, you know, they just have the we're we're located in the prime spot to do these things right here on Main Street. This is where everything's happening. This is this you can't get you can't get any better than that. Hey. The listeners are there and they are listening. Mm -hmm. you know, we are getting out of the time where people are, you know, subscribing to the you know, to us. Yeah, they're bringing it up to us in conversation. When we go, when we go places, just like when we we, we went to the event with Carrie Riser, they came to us. Oh, you know, you we we listened to you guys. We heard about you guys, and we're not talking about ourselves out there. They they are mentioning us, and they're from other stations, and that's that's to me that's a big compliment. Yeah. You know, because they're they're on a different frequency. They're on FM stations and they're talking to us. They come and actually introduce themselves to us, and that that made me feel good. That really uh, did. The thing is, I wish we could get people to call in at this time. It's just it's hard for people because a lot of people want to sleep in on Saturdays. Yeah, you know? especially when it's cold and stuff. Right. Nobody nobody's dedicated to getting up this early in the morning. You know, and but. Uh, it's just, I think the format of the show is a positive format. Right. And as long as we can keep our faces out there, people see us, and that way we'll bring people to come in. Right. 
We have a title. I know it's working. I know it's working because what we're reading is actually doing good for the events that we're reading about. Mm -hmm. Especially the the YouTube. The YouTube channel is hitting really hard. Mm -hmm. I know the documentaries are doing good. I know it's getting the word out, just like the suicide prevention has a, has had a lot of hits. I know that the uh, global warming documentary has had a tremendous reception on YouTube. I know the radio show has a tremendous success rate on YouTube. You know, it's just that people, when we're on the air live, people, you know, they, they want to rest on Saturday morning. So, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying it with me, it's like, I used to get up Elmo three years ago, this would be normal for me to get up. Right. Now it's like, dragging myself out, man. <laughs> Well, let me see this. Okay, here's something interesting for those people in Newport. So you want to go to Newport, the Holiday Craft Fair. And this is the 31st annual Holiday Craft Fair will be held on Saturday, November 21st, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sunday, November the 22nd, from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. in St. Joseph Church Hall, located on 34 South Chestnut Street in Newport. The event will feature more than 30 vendors, baked goods, raffles, and more. For more and different information, call Kate at 883-9552. So once again, a holiday craft fair in New York. And to call for additional information, call Kate at 883-9552. And it's located at St. Joseph Church Hall at 34 South Chestnut Street in New York. Wow, see, now they've been doing that for quite some time. That's now that's dedication. See, that's that's dedication, and I'm glad that was read here on the air. I really am because maybe that helps them out just a little bit. See, now that's that's true dedication. They've been doing that for over 30 years. And here's something else: free Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving luncheon in Highland, a free community. Thanksgiving luncheon will be held on Thursday, November 26th, from 1 to 3 p.m. at St. Augustus School. Located at 5 Phillip Avenue in Highland. To sign up for free transportation call 691-7673 or 464-528284. So once again, a free Thanksgiving lunch in Highland. And it's at 5th Phillip Avenue in Highland. And to sign up for free transportation call 691-7673 or 464-5284. That's awesome. And I do want to give a shout out to uh, the church in uh, Beacon for opening up the new food bank, which is uh, uh, the new soup kitchen located in Beacon. It's on my Facebook, which I don't have access to my Facebook right now because we are recording this live to be put on YouTube later. So my tablet is not, it's in use right now recording the show. But, uh, the new soup kitchen that opened up in Deacon two days ago. I posted it on my Facebook. If you go to Stanley Stanley K. Moss on Facebook, you will see it on my public public Facebook there. If you haven't been there, go there and I'll accept your friendship. Just send me a friendship request. And uh, But they opened up a new soup kitchen in Beacon. The church there, along with... Uh, Duchess Outreach Program and other sponsorships, and that is an awesome thing, a beautiful thing, and uh, I wish I had I wish I had uh, my Facebook on in front of me, but I don't. And I would give you more information on it. I don't have a flyer on it, but I think it's a beautiful thing. Duchess Outreach is doing wonderful things all over the county, and I hope it continues to grow and reach out and touch more people. Um, Mr. Rydell, you're doing a beautiful job. I know you're on vacation until the 3rd of December, but uh, your organization and, and other uh, co-sponsors are uh, definitely doing a wonderful job, especially during the cold months that's coming ahead. So uh, hats off to you guys, and God bless you guys. And if you need help, I wish I had the address. Like I said, I don't have my Facebook on right in front of me. It's... Uh, Right now, it's being used to record the radio show for uh, the YouTube broadcast. But uh, awesome job. Awesome job there in the city of Beacon. 
Mm -hmm. And here's another thing. It's in the briefly note for the New Past Times. Children holiday books at Eaton Library. Same I've been saying. And we're praying about a children holiday book <coughs> that will take place from November the 21st to December 22nd in Elton Memorial Library in New York. Hundreds of gift selections will be available for readers from ages 2 to 13. Books will be discounted 70 to 80 percent. The library is located at 93 Main Street, New Port, New York. So, once again, starting today to December 22nd, the Elton Library will be having a children's holiday book sale, and the books will be from discount from 70 to 80 percent from ages 2 to 13. And the library is located in 93 Main Street, New Park, New York. So take the children and enjoy the time. And the most important thing is they can learn to read and enjoy. Amen to that. And I do want I do want to remind everybody, please be safe on Black Friday. Starts next year. Or this I mean next year. Uh, Next Friday is Black Friday for all you uh, holiday shoppers. I do want you to be safe out there. Um, there's no big rush. We've got all the holiday do our shopping. The sales go on. I do believe most, most stores are extending their sales. So uh, please be patient, courteous of others. Nobody nobody really wants to get hurt in the holiday shopping rush. Um, I'm going to ask you a, I'm gonna ask you a question. You go right ahead. Go right Do you ahead. think any store should be open on Thanksgiving Day? I think everybody should have that holiday, unless it's an emergency. You know, <laughs> and, you know. And I think I think everybody should really be home with their family. Family time is quality time, and quality time should should not be overlooked. Families don't fence. It's, it's the same way I feel about the minimum wage. Nobody should have to work over 40 hours to, in order to support their family. So the minimum wage obviously should be enough to support your family uh, on the minimum wage. You know, right out of school you should be able to support your family. No matter where, no matter where you're at or what you're doing or what job it is, you should be able to support yourself. So with that being said, yes, I think minimum wage should be adequate to support your family. I don't care if, you, if you're sh <coughs> shoveling muck out of a stall. It should be enough <coughs> excuse me, to support your family. But uh, minimum wage should, should be enough to support your family. That just trickles down. Now if you're in a specified, specified um, like the medical field or something like that, or a union, speci specified educated um, form of work, then it should be up. It should be more, you know. Mm -hmm. But I can't, I can't, I can't understand why a person should have to spend more than forty hours, or have two jobs to support himself, unless they have more than one child. You know, that's different. But if you have one child, you should be able to support you, your wife, and your child on one job. Yeah. Anything else is considered quality home time. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Because that's why everybody's running the streets. Because parents aren't at home parenting and spending quality time with their children. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? It shouldn't get to the point to where, you know, the kids that are running the street, well, why are you running the street? Well, my daddy don't spend time with me. What? That's not an excuse. And that's what happens then they get into trouble. Yeah. And then they wonder what's going on. So, with all that being said, you know, it, 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 there's, there's, sometimes the answer to the hardest questions are right in front of your face. It's just you don't, you don't really look at them, you know. So if, if, if you sit down and, and, and think about it and say, wow, if I just spent more time with my child, because your child's not young forever. Yeah. And you say, oh, wow, if I could have just spent more time with my kid when he was growing up. Well, now you've got the child's grown, and you didn't spend time with him. Your child hates you. 
and that hate time that turned into a hate crime or that turned into him out there on the street doing the wrong thing because you didn't take him to the y m c a or you didn't take him to you know didn't spend time with him in the gym or whatever you know yeah but then all of a sudden he ends up in jail you know it is a revolving thing but you gotta fill in those gaps with how about some quality yeah but if you have but what is the choice if you got to keep your family going you gotta wait three or four jobs by the time you get home you're so exhausted you don't have no time to eat for yourself right but if you only spend if you have to work 40 hours you have to work 40 hours exactly it's better than working anywhere from 70 to 90 hours if I had two jobs if I work two full-time jobs that's 80 hours yeah okay okay if you did 40 hours okay Cool. But you gotta pay them. You gotta pay them a decent salary for them to do that. Otherwise, you. That's the one. That's my point. That's it's my exactly. Point. You looking for kids rent? I mean, mm -hmm. come on. You can't afford it on one if, person. Yeah. If you had, if you had two kids, I could see it. But the average, if if the person only had one kid, yeah. But if you decided to have two kids, well, that's a decision you made on your own. You had two kids, so now you gotta work eighty hours. You see what I'm saying? That's two jobs. But normally in a family, the family makeup would be a husband and a wife. Yeah. Now you got a wife working 40 hours and the husband working 40 hours. Right. Okay, then you could support two kids. See what I'm saying? Because you got two incomes coming from two different places. And then somebody is with home with the kids, but yeah. now you can work two jobs. You don't even never jump up. Right. You don't even make enough need to support your house. Yeah. But that, if you get an emergency, yeah, you're because, devastated. Because if you got two two parents working two forty hour jobs, okay, honey, you work during the day, I'll work a night shift. You work forty hours during the day, I'll work forty hours at night, you know. It works out checks and balances. You can work out it can be done. See it can saying? be, but now to make the money you talking about, you have the both parents have to work at least eighty dollars eighty hours to make up the to make it up. The, the way it is right now, yeah. Yes. That's the way it is right now. But, uh... I mean, i seen some rental for apartments, so you gotta be out, you know, and, and then you gotta pay for gas and electric on top of it. There ain't much left, but you gotta have transportation, and, let, and that ain't cheap. If your car break down, that ain't cheap. Right. And you got any medical expenses, but if we're a child, you have to be home. That cuts your money out, and you don't make it on the McDonald's and take um, salary. McDonald's or Burger King pays you. You can't do it. That's right, and that and that's <clears throat> that's that's the whole thing. You have to you have to do it. It's just people don't people don't want to vote on it because they don't want to take that much out of their pockets. The thing is, it's not taken out of their pockets. If you have, if you had uh, the corporate industry making so much money for so long, okay, okay, let's say they're making thousands and thousands of dollars an hour. If they put that money in the bank, security, whatever, okay, for so many years, they're rich already. Their families are hooked up already, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're gonna go broke if they do go broke, they have a problem. Okay, mm. that's, that's that would that would be like uh, Donald Trump going broke, as rich as he claims to be. Okay, that would be like um, a billionaire going broke. Okay, you're not going to hurt this man. You know he's too rich. See what I'm saying? So okay, now you made your money. Now everybody else should be getting minimum wage. It's got to be raised. And I'm not talking about over a 10-year period. I'm not talking about over a five-year period. I'm talking about overnight period. Mm -hmm. Don't make them wait. Don't make them wait. Here you go. Merry Christmas. Bam. Everything's got to wait till January 1st? Okay. We'll wait till January 1st. Do it. Mm -hmm. You can threaten. You can threaten shutting down Congress. You can threaten shutting down the government. You can threaten do this. You can do threaten... But... When it comes to the common man, the common woman, the common family, you ain't got no say so? I say no. Right. I say no. How can the government sh threaten to shut something down but the people can't? The government works for the people. No. no. Why can't the people threaten to shut down the government? <laughs> 
<laughs> so the thing is, is not the government owned by corporations, like I think. Yeah, well, see, that's that's where the people have to say, well, you know what? <clears throat> we're not going to pay. We're not going to pay taxes this year. We're not going to. We're not going to go nowhere. We're not going to do anything the government wants this year. Come tax time, you, what are you going to do? Rest us all? We're not going to pay no taxes this year. We're going to do what we have to do, but, you know, that's it. What you, what you going to do? And you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, okay, we're going to cut down all the social services, but we ain't going to pay our own selves. Yeah. That's what they're going to do. We can't it. afford it, so goodbye social service, goodbye everything. But you know you're going to have to pull teacher out getting some money out of these rich people. But you know they ain't going without it. Yeah. Well, you're looking at four minutes to eight, and uh, you're listening to WHBW 9.50 a.m. And uh, we was hoping to have some guests come by today. But uh, like I said, it's early in the morning for everybody. Uh, we, had a, we had a wonderful subject to talk about, and that was the uh, coat drive uh, that was going on. I still want to remind everybody one more time that uh, there is a winter coat drive going on for the homeless families of Dutchess County. Yeah. And uh, they are doing a collection, a collection box in the, the temple lobby. Uh, please donate Bright Nights Winter Coat Drive. They're looking for uh, winter coats for men, women and children, hats, gloves, scarves, boots, blankets, warm sweaters and sweatpants, backpacks, socks, toiletries, collecting through December 13th. They thank you for it. Um, you can also volunteer and help sort donations on Sunday, November 29th through December 6th, possibly through December 13th. Volunteers needed December 19th and 20th for final organization and delivery to homeless shelters. Contact Liz Goldstone at lizgoldstone at hotmail.com, all lowercase. Monetary donations requested to purchase additional supplies. All donations are tax deductible. Receipts available in EBE office. Okay, so with that being said, we was hoping to have somebody to come by to discuss this, but uh, obviously they couldn't, and that's okay too, because we're doing our best to get the word out. We always try to help those who help others, and that's what we try to do during the week is get information out. We love them no matter what. We just try to help them out with getting them here. And uh, we could keep pushing on. Right now we're waiting for uh, Captain Joel Tyner to come in and take control of his own his own political ship. Yeah. And, and sail, sail it on a journey on that cruise. And with that being said, uh, we're just going to hang out and wait for him. He's probably caught up in traffic, and that's, that, that's okay too because sometimes... Uh, the expressway is not as expressly mm. as we want it to be. <laughs> Traffic backs up, but uh, but uh, that's uh, the kind of stuff that happens when you have to take a long ride early in the morning, and sometimes you have to get a, get a stop and get a latte to get yeah. you on your way. So we understand that. So we're going to sit here and keep you company and. Sitting here packing, packing the bags and getting ready because I know he likes to come in here and run up on you. Mm -hmm. So, but that's all right too, because uh, we enjoy we enjoy seeing him every every weekend. Sometimes we even hang out to just see what's up, get informed ourselves. We don't get political, but we like to hear what's up. Mm -hmm. So I, I take my time because sure. I, I like to be informed, and I know he's listening on his way in. So sure. yeah, but like he said. Like Stanley, he do, you know, me, I'm the, you know, I go every which way. It could be this way, it could be non-political, political. Is the news have to come out when we are. We don't do a political show, but I do do political. Always stay involved. Right. You know what's going around. You know what's going on. Like I had the very interesting stuff here. That I'm going to follow up on pretty much. I'm going to sit that right there. That way, any guest that comes in and wants to see the coat drive form, I'm going to leave the coat drive form right there on top of the on top of the uh, CD player. In case anybody's interested, they can just take a look at it. 
take a gander at it. But, uh, I just want everybody to be careful. It is a cold morning out there. Yeah. But in the looks of it, it's, only, it's still only 38 degrees. Is it? Yeah, and about 3 degrees Celsius this morning. Here he is. Hello, hello. And there's the captain of his own political ship, ready to take his own political trip. And ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the happenings around the Hudson Valley, and it's 8 o'clock on the hour. And if you got something to say, say it now, or forever hold your peace. And speaking of peace, here's the news from around the globe. <laughs> you need to of this. How you doing there, big guy? All right, all right. All right, it's good to see you. Yes, right. see. Okay, though. So, and let me look at that. Yeah. You may be interested in it. I need it back, though. All right. Now, we'll, we'll fax you a copy there. <laughs>